Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So we're just here for another one of my weekly workshops of the mass making. Today we are going to mass make envelopes. Um, we have made envelopes before, but these are more the conventional style envelopes rather than the um, just like folded over, you know, glued down the side envelopes that we did a few workshops back. Um, so what you're going to need if you want to craft along and do this Obviously, if you have an envelope punch board, feel free to use that. Um, I am not going to be using my punch board because I want to make this inclusive for everybody. I don't want anyone to kind of feel that they can't join in because they don't have a punch board. So I have um, endeavoured to use up some of my six by six paper pads. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I also have, you know, a few of those. I've also used a couple of eight by eight um, sheets as well. And I've also brought along 12 by 12 where I just cut um, an 8 by 8 sheet. Obviously, you could get six, uh, four 6 by 6 sheets from a 12 by 12 as well. So if you haven't got the 6 by 6, you can do it using, obviously, a 12 by 12 sheet. Uh, you know, of course, you could use any size you like. I also did one with an A4 sheet where, again, I just cut it down to a 6 by 6 size. Um, so the basics that you're going to need is obviously your paper, your glue, um, possibly a bone folder or failing that maybe some scissors that you can just kind of press down at the edges. You're obviously going to need scissors. Um, I think that was all that we actually used for the basic making of the envelopes. As I say, if you want to use your punch board, that's also fine. Uh, and then obviously any bits that you're going to want for decorating I mean, this is my piece that I've decorated up. So, you know, I just have all sorts on my desk and I just reached for the stuff I had around me. Um, but if you wanted to bring some book page, doily, some lace trim, things like that, then um, by all means do do that. And obviously your distress ink and your blending tool. So, OK, let's get making. So if I just move all of those out of the way... Now, if I show you, first of all, the method that I have used. Now, as I say, this is a very scrappy method and it's probably not the best, really. So I take my twelve, uh, my 6x6 six six sheet. It doesn't have to be 6x6. Six six. These are just the paper pads that I have, um, you know, that I thought, oh, I could do with using some of those because I generally don't very often use 6x6 six six pages, um, you know, so that's why I've picked these. Now what I did was literally started by folding roughly where I would have the top flap coming down, like that. Again, I do not measure or anything like that and this possibly is going to trip me up and that's why my envelopes are, you know, not the best really. Um, but that's how I kind of like to craft I'm afraid. So then what I did was I just tucked in the corners and as you can see, I mean, there's a little fold there. That doesn't bother me. And then the other side, very similarly, going in there, approximately the same-ish, you know, as, as best best you can the same. Um, obviously, I haven't pressed these down yet or anything, so you can move them around a little bit. I mean, it really doesn't matter if you've got, um, what's the word, like fold marks I mean that's kind of nice really because it also makes your paper a lot more um, bendable some of these papers are quite thick so you know don't be too worried or anything so this is going to be my top flap that obviously closes the envelope I mean it could I guess be my bottom one but then what I do is I take my bottom one up and I fold it this is not very easy to explain I fold it including a little tiny bit of, of this, if that makes sense. And the reason I do that is just so as it comes up high enough to definitely have covered my flap, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get my bone folder and then check that that's straightish. I mean, as I say, I don't measure anything, so, you know, it... It might not be quite perfect. Let me just put a sheet of blank paper down so you're not looking at that mess there. 
Okay, and so then I'm just going to score it with my bone folder like that. Score this one down here. And then you've got your flap there. Now, I like to just curve this off slightly. Again, no method to that. Just, you know, as best you can, really. Just so as it looks a bit more like a conventional envelope, I guess. And then take your glue and just run down here like that. And then a little bit on the outside edge of here. So again, just on that edge there and a little bit here. And just going to close the envelope up like that. And obviously we already made different style envelopes um, a couple of workshops back. But I mean, they really are very, um, you know, produce very different types of envelopes. If you've got an overhang, you can just trim that in like that. You know, it's a very minuscule amount. And once that's decorated up and things, you're not going to notice that at all. So then with your flap here on your envelope, if it's not quite central, you can just, you know, trim it down so it's a little bit better placed in the center. Now, I like to round my edge or end of the flap. Oops, my, my corner rounder doesn't seem very good today. That's probably where I've just cut it actually at a not very good angle. Um, if you don't have a corner rounder, again, just mimic some sort of end on your flap. So that's all we're doing is making these fun little envelopes. As I say, if you've got an envelope punch board, that's fine. And by all means, use that. I just really didn't want to exclude anybody from the process. So that's my first envelope move on to the next one and again I'll just demonstrate once more so that you know it's clear and everyone knows what I did so again I just tuck my this is going to be my top flap and I just tuck it down where I want it and then I'm just going to take my sides in and again I mean they've gone slightly over there like that but that's fine Okay, and then the other side similarly, bring it in like that, like that, and then your bottom flap, you just want to bring in slightly more so as you've got an overlap where your side pieces are, so just check. And I mean, as you can see, this one has turned out a much longer envelope. But that's fine because, you know, <laughs> envelopes come in all different shapes and sizes, don't they? So that's fine. So I'll just score that down now. Like that. And I think, yeah, I was just saying, you know, I'm, I know we made some envelopes a couple of weeks ago, but, or a couple of workshops back, but it's nice to have a whole variety of styles to use in your journal. So these are just obviously an alternative. So as you've got some things to mix it up with. I'm just going to take that in slightly on that side. Okay. And then again, we just glue down our bottom flap. Like that. Oops. Like that. Oops. Got a lot of glue there seeping out, so obviously didn't make a very good job of folding this one into a good shape, but I mean it's fine, it does work still. And then again, I mean, that flap obviously is quite long. So again, oops, you can just trim it down like that. 
okay so you know it's quite nice to have a little mixture of you know shapes and sizes for your envelope so that's a little long thin one so we'll do one more like together and then I will stop demonstrating and we can actually just relax and craft and you know have a nice time so this one is an eight by eight um paper so again I'm going to take my flap in the the top flap and I mean you can gauge roughly whether it's central or not by how much is left either side so that's your guide and again take your flaps in at the side like that and then that one as well okay and then fold your bottom flap up so I'm just checking that that's kind of straightish so you know and if you need to adjust it at all as I say I mean it really doesn't matter because it's, it's fine to have the multiple kind of fold lines and actually all it does do is just like I say makes the paper a little bit more flexible Oops, so that one is going to drop down slightly on this side like that that's very straight Yep, like that. So again, I'm just going to do that to the inside. Like that. And then we've got, obviously here, where our flap bends over. So again, just going to glue these little bits down. There and there. And along here, like that, okay? Oops. Again, just take my white to sort of spread the glue, like that. And obviously, you know, you may want to go around your edges now with the bone folder once you're happy with the shape and the size of that. Okay, and then you've got your flap. So again, you might want to then press that down with the bone folder. And again, you can then just round your flap as you want. Okay, so that's that one. So we've already done three, which is pretty good, isn't it? So what I might do now is, um, just to mix it up, take maybe some of my patterned paper. So I'm just grabbing some here from the side. So this is from my Halloween kit. And um, they're just some of the off-cut pieces, really, that I was doing you know, whilst I was printing the kit to get it just right. So, I mean, again, you know, you don't want to waste anything, really. So, uh, I'm just going to cut this down again to a sort of six by six paper size. Like that. And obviously, you know, I don't really overly like using a paper trimmer and you know, I don't like measuring. So my measurements might be slightly off, but I just like to use the the paper as a template. And I mean, you can probably see it's, it's out by like a fraction of a millimeter. It's it's fine, you know. Um, and as I say, we can just fold it up accordingly and then hide any bits that <laughs> that don't look quite perfect. So again, I'm going to just fold in my top flap roughly where you want it. We're going to fold in our sides. I've made a very good job of this actually because I think I folded that flap too far in so let's let's redo that like 
okay and then fold in your side flaps this one and then the next one can you hear the rain it's um it's a really hideous day today and obviously you know i think you've probably seen my desk now and where i craft so you'll know that i'm you know up in the loft and um hence when it rains and things it's obviously quite loud right there we go and then if, again just take your pieces back out oops refold it like that and then just that's your flap so again i'm just going to pop that like that now this is just from copy paper, this envelope here that I've made. So I mean, it's not the most robust envelope, you know, whereas obviously the six by six paper pad and the eight, eight by eight, they're, you know, they're proper paper pads, so they're a bit thicker. I mean, I do use a variety when I'm printing out my printables of copy paper, regular copy paper, which I think is like 80 GSM. And, um, cardstock but obviously while I'm printing them out to get them right I don't want to just waste a load of um, paper so I tend to print them on copy paper so that's what I'm just using here because obviously you know I don't want to just be really wasteful so to reuse it is quite good there we go, Oops. There we go. Another one done. So I'm going to stop talking now about what I'm doing. I just wanted to demonstrate the few different techniques that we were using. Um, you know, how I would cut down a piece of paper. So perhaps now I will cut here. Um, I mean, I guess what I could do is cut this in as an 8 by 8 And we'll do another larger envelope. And obviously that will leave me with these odd pieces. But that's fine because... We can always use them to make other bits. So I just do exactly the same. I take the 8x8 sheet and I just cut around that like a template. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Right, let me check. I'm still filming and in frame because uh, I haven't checked, I think, this whole video yet. So, oh, just had a horrible feeling there. Right, okay go so now this has got splotches of um coffee on it where i was obviously coffee dye and something and it was just in the in the vicinity really so there we go so i hope everyone's having a good day hope you're getting some crafting done if you're mass making with me, then welcome along. Touch wood, these mass making seem really, you know, well received and people are seeming to enjoy them. So that's fantastic. Um, you know, obviously for me, that just is awesome because, as I said, you know, part of the reason why I started doing the mass making was because I'm not a very good mass maker. Um... I tend to just make like one of things so this for me is really helpful and um, it's just more fun to be chatting away and crafting along with you guys than it would be mass making on my own so I'm very grateful to all those people who are joining in and keeping me company really Okay, like that and then again I'm just going to trim my flap down not my flap sorry the you know the inner of the envelope Oops. like that so I mean we are working through our our supplies through our book pages through our 12 by 12 pads today obviously some 6 by 6 pads and some 8 by 8 pads and things like that um I mean, I think I have said this before, 
to look at my surrounding area you wouldn't really think it was making any sort of dent whatsoever but you know I can uh, tell myself inwardly that I'm working through just got a bit of an overhang here the overhang seems to occur more when the paper is thick that I'm using so there we go just trim those little bits off like that and again just tuck my flap down And of course it is nice to have a few ready-made pieces. I mean, I'm aware that, again, we're going to do a little feature using some of the bits we're making. Um, obviously I'm filming these ahead, so it may be that by the time that I've actually filmed this, maybe I'm already on my way with those. Um, you know, I don't know, obviously at this point. Uh, but I'm aware that I've said I'm going to do that, so I promise I will be doing that. Um, I just have kind of a few other things that I'm trying to get done at the same time. Now this one, I absolutely love this paper. <laughs> Don't you love this? I mean I love green, it's kind of my favourite colour and this shade of green is just beautiful, it's like an olive green and it's got all this script so I've kind of hoard in this and um, yeah I'm not sure whether I can bring myself to use this because I actually really like just tearing little pieces of this off and having it in background so I may not use that um so let's just do another six by six one I mean why I feel the need to hoard any paper whatsoever is just a mystery to be honest but I don't think I'm alone judging by comments that people kind of have been leaving so that's nice to know that I'm not just a lunatic on my own doing that um yeah Bring that one in slightly more because that didn't look very straight. Looking straighter. Yep. So I mean this is why obviously I would be doing a much better job with my punch board but um, yeah I mean as I say I just didn't really want to kind of exclude anyone who maybe didn't have a punch board so because not everyone obviously has got those things have they? was out of the line actually so I can just bring that in slightly but just untuck the flap tuck that up okay yeah I mean I know that we did make some similar well they weren't really similar some other envelopes a few workshops back but I mean I think it's really nice to have a variety of styles so these are more like your conventional envelopes really aren't they so it's um it's nice to have different ones okay okay see that one up and again I mean this paper's quite thickish so I might just have to trim that little notch off there at the corner and this is where the punch board obviously really comes in because the punch board does do these little um, like notches here so it avoids you having these little folded thicker parts of the envelope but I mean these are fine you know there's no reason why these aren't just as good to be honest so don't feel that you have to rush out and buy a punch board because um you really don't you know i think these really are just as good i mean i think i said before i have sometimes made um envelopes according to a template which i've got a few different types up here on the wall let me just pull a couple in you know I have made them like this where obviously I've popped it down and I've drawn around it on the page and made it like that um, and they're fun too I'm just obviously doing this because these are nice quick ones to do and obviously as part of part of the 
mass making it's nice to just do things that are quite quick so you know that's why I thought these were quite a good good option okay yeah I don't very often buy the six by six um, paper pads I I buy them occasionally if I absolutely love a paper and you know the shop doesn't seem to have them in any other size I mean definitely my favorite paper pads would be 12 by 12 um, or occasionally I've bought a six by six if it's quite expensive paper I can't bring myself to spend you know the full cost of the 12 by 12 so those are the sort of occasions where I maybe would buy a six by six but I you know nonetheless I have got obviously quite a few six by sixes that I've gradually had those scenarios occurred over the years and um, have managed to accumulate. So I just thought get using a couple because otherwise they're just sat, sat in my cupboard doing nothing. Might as well actually use them here and have them as some ready-made pieces ready to go for journals. I mean, isn't this paper gorgeous? So this paper here came from, let me pull in the pad. Oh gosh, come on. No, not that pad. I mean, I only had a couple of pads here, for goodness sake. Don't know why I'm <laughs> not able to get to it. Hold on a moment. What am I doing? Oh, that's the most peculiar thing. I don't know where that pad has gone. No, I'm so sorry. I don't know where that pad's gone now. Oh, I don't know. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was a Prima. A Prima marketing pad. Um, I mean, I do love those Prima papers and things, don't you? They're just absolutely gorgeous. They seem to just do the most beautiful things. And I can just do it with my bone folder. And again, I just, you know, snip off the edge like that. You know, and if you're not happy first time, just go round it a second time. There we go. Like that. Oops. So I might make a couple with my 8x8 eight eight papers now. So I've brought this one along. So, for instance, this one, you know, I maybe wouldn't use this pattern, but this pattern is brilliant. So we'll pop that one down and then, oh, I always just love dots. Just something about polka dots, isn't there? So perhaps we'll make a couple with those. Okay. Now, do I want it? I think I like the darker side, so I'm going to go for the dark side, I think. So again, just, you know, where it looks roughly central. I mean, I'm not sure that is very central, actually, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's fine. Take that in. And the reason we have to have this little bit here with this fold is just so it overlaps that flap. Can you see that? So we have to do that on on either side. So just take that in there like that. Just check I've got that approximately square. And then we're going to just take our bottom bit up like that. Oops, I've made a horrible job of this one <laughs> I don't know what I've done here but it doesn't look very good okay well, it looks a little bit better now not much but a bit so again I just squash that down now with my bone folder and then I'm just going to round you know the um 
the inner part. Take that out. Okay, so then we can glue that down. Like that. And a bit there. Oops, like that. this one out of the way before I end up with glue all over that now yeah I don't know what it is about polka dots but they're just so pretty aren't they always fun and they look great with so many different styles I mean they look great with vintage they look great with you know retro they look great with contemporary they look great with cutesy I just think they look great with actually everything they're probably the most versatile thing I think so that's that one and again if you feel your whoops flap is not quite central just shape it round so as it looks a little bit better placed then I think this is not that easy because obviously it's a bit like if you have stripes because the spots are going in lines they're throwing me out as to where that looks but I think that looks okay now that's that one and then just do this lovely green one so fold trying to avoid the edge that had got the tear you know from where I've torn it out of the paper pad so that way bring this in here like that and here like that again we can just do with coming in slightly more and we just bring our bottom flap up One just needs to come in a bit more, I think, like that. Okay, yep. So again, I'll just now press that down with the bone folder. Now, I'm going to just show you quickly. For those people who don't have an envelope scoreboard, and trust me, I promise I'm not trying to sell you one. <laughs> um, you know or anything like that but I just want to show you basically the main difference I guess of what we're doing here when I open this out now hopefully you can see we've got here these little bits where obviously the sort of folds are now of course you could go in with your scissors and you could cut that if you've got an envelope punch board you can just go in and just punch that out. So if I do it on that side. Now obviously this isn't quite perfect because obviously I haven't used my, my punch board so my flap's now completely misaligned. Well that wasn't the best demonstration was it? To be honest I hadn't really thought of that so what I can do now Oh dear, don't ever um, improvise whilst crafting. What I can do now is bring my flaps in more. I just really wanted to demonstrate, obviously for those people who don't have a punch board, what I was talking about with those, um, oh God, what would you call those? Nooks, niches, I don't know. That's the benefit of having those because it does that for you. Okay, now <laughs> luckily that was on my bottom flap, so I've got my top flap here folded over. So I'm going to show you here, this is effectively what it did. So if I cut down here 
on my fold lines which I haven't bothered doing on my other envelopes I have just you know glued it down and sort of put up with the bulk Oops. we've got that one and we've got this one here okay like that that's the kind of difference that it's given you is just really that you know um i mean obviously you're going to avoid having your multiple fold lines because you you know you're able to score to get the perfect size envelope for the page um but <laughs> i'm not doing this very well but what i'm trying to show you is you can easily make very similar envelopes by hand as we're doing here so if you don't have a punch board i don't think you know you necessarily have to rush out and buy one of course if you're just building up your stash and you think you're going to use it lots then they are they are nice to have you know there's no getting away from that they are a nice thing to have um but if it's just a case of making you know 10 12 envelopes every four or five months then to be honest this may be is a good enough method to use so I mean obviously I've got those double folds now where I obviously did that that muck up just now but that's fine because once you decorate the envelope and things they'll be just covered up and you won't really notice that to be honest okay so again I'm just going to do that on my flap so as it just looks kind of better finished off I don't appear to have made a very good job of this one. It's uh, a bit skew -if, but never mind. Never mind, it will, uh, again, it will be less noticeable once it's decorated. I actually seem to have made that more skew -if now instead of less. So let me just see if I can fold that up. Oh, well, I think I'd best stop playing around with this because I'm actually making it worse. So <laughs> let's just go in like that. Okay, that's fine, it will it will do. So how not to do your envelope is obviously that little demo. <laughs> but you know, I just really wanted to show the main thing that we were missing by not having the punch board. So, so far we've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've made nine, so we'll just do a couple more. Um, we seem to have a bit of a thing going on, don't we, where we, we seem to manage to make 12 so now well, I'm just wondering on my flap whether to actually cover those bits up so again just take your flap in and perhaps this one I'll do a little bit better by showing you obviously taking those notches out so again we'll fold our sides in like that and that one I did not do that one very well. So again, let me just take this side in now a little bit more. And then we fold our flap down. Like that. Okay. Okay, so again, just go along with my bone folder. Get everything pressed in as you want it and then we'll open it out so I mean really I'm just being lazy when I'm not doing this but just so as you see what we're doing we're just snipping these bits out like that Oops. if you haven't got an envelope punch board and you're now I'm in an R in and you know kind of debating is it worth buying one I do have a tutorial I think it's on my tutorials playlist um, how to use the envelope punch board there's a tutorial I think for making obviously envelopes and also for making um, mason jars 
they should both be in my tutorials playlist. So if you wanted to check those out, then, you know, they're on there on the tutorials playlist. Um, you know, because it might just be that you want to just have a bit more of a, a look. So, and of course, of course, there's loads of other people with tutorials for the envelope punch board. So, you know, if you don't like mine, then there's loads of other ones. I mean, I've had mine for, I think, just over a year. I wouldn't say that I've used it hugely. Um, yeah, I wouldn't really say I've used it huge amounts. <sighs> Maybe I would use it slightly more now that I'm more in the mindset of the mass making. Because I would obviously then mass make a whole bunch of envelopes. Where obviously when I first got it, I just would make one. You know, so it kind of perhaps was a bit pointless because by the time I you know got it out and everything just to make one envelope seemed a bit of a waste of time um if you're mass making a few I'm sure it's probably better really um but yeah feel free to have a look and see what you think there we go so there's another one so it must be at 10 now so we'll do two more isn't this the most beautiful beautiful paper so again this is from that same prima one that i now can't find the the name of which is a shame because it's so nice i mean i generally think prima prima papers are just lovely aren't they they really make some really very nice things Again, you don't really see it very much over here because our main shops, certainly where I live, um, we have a shop here called The Range, which that's my main kind of craft type shop. Um, and we have obviously a shop here called Hobbycraft. Now, Hobbycraft is quite expensive compared to The Range, I find. Um, so I don't necessarily go in there that much. But also, I don't find they necessarily have any better stock than the range do, even though they're a dedicated craft shop. And the range obviously is not a dedicated craft shop. They're a bit more like Woolworths and sell kind of a bit of everything. Um, but Hobbycraft, yeah, is quite expensive, to be honest. But neither of those places have I ever seen, I think, um, Prima. Stuff, I don't think I mean I might have lots of people saying oh I've seen it in there loads of times but I don't feel like I have certainly um, which again what a shame because I love all that Prima stuff so again I won't be won't be lazy here and I'll cut those little pieces out yeah I love the Prima Prima range of things I mean, my favourite, probably, brands are Prima and um, Kayser Craft. I absolutely just love everything, really. Prima and everything Kayser Craft. I think they're just all absolutely gorgeous. Um, I mean, Tim Holtz, obviously, is like a genius, isn't he? But um, I don't think I've ever actually bought any Tim Holtz paper, believe it or not. I don't know why that is again it's quite expensive um i'm just wondering which one to have as the flap i think i'm going to have that one actually so i mean you can always turn these round sorry um just going off at a tangent there um i'm making a better job now that i'm not being so lazy to be fair and I'm cutting those notches out so I should have really done that all along so a bit of a bit of a tip there if you're crafting along with me without the punch board it's probably worth not being lazy and actually cutting those notches out because the envelopes do come out better to be honest um yeah the Tim Holtz papers I, I probably I'm a, being a bit of a you know a tightwad really and not buying them because of that um, also again, there's nowhere really much to see them in the flesh. Hobbycraft, my local Hobbycraft, they do sell a small amount of Tim Holtz things. 
again, not a great deal. I mean, given what a presence Tim Holtz has in the craft world, I find it quite shocking that they barely, isn't this lovely, um, that they barely actually stock any of his things. I mean, it's like half a, you know, one of those long shelf type arrangements. It's like half of that. And when you think some of that is um, stamps, it's a lot of it is the Distress Inks. Um, they have obviously some of his dies. What else do they have? Um, I don't know really. Uh, what else? What else do they have in there? I'm not sure. I'm trying to actually picture. They have like the metal things that he sells. The, um, oh, what do you call them? Like the findings. Findings? Those metal type bits and pieces. Um, what else do they have? They have, uh, I don't know, to be honest. I mainly seems to be dominated by the inks, really. And they literally normally have one paper pad, um, you know, one style of paper pad, and that's it. Um, which is a bit of a shame, really. And the same with all the, you know, his lovely die cut pieces. They actually, to be fair, the last time I went in there, they did seem to have a few more of those. But ordinarily, previously, they'd maybe carry one or two lines of that, um, which is a shame, isn't it? So, yeah. Okay. So, take my sides in again. <laughs> and then that's off flat like that. So, we could have it like that, in fact. Um, obviously, because I'm now cutting those notches in, I'm folding the sides in more. So they're slightly less long envelopes, um, if you can see that. Which again, I mean, it's quite nice to have a sort of variety of styles, really. So, I mean, obviously, if I were doing this again, I would probably not be lazy and I would cut those notches out. But equally, I would probably still make a variety of long and more stumpy envelopes because I think it's nice to have the ability to mix it up. I'm just going to now round the flap. And obviously when I'm now making these like stumpy ones, it doesn't then really matter whether you use the top flap or the bottom flap. You can mix it up a bit more. I'm just going to trim this piece down a little bit more. Okay, so that's that one. So that's probably it for the making. I will decorate one to just, oh, suddenly, sorry, I've just knocked my entire desk. I'm fidgeting around now, kneeling on to the other leg. Uh, right, suddenly we've now zoomed on and it's now like 48 minutes. So having a look through, I might decorate, should I decorate this one? For some reason, this one was just kind of calling me. So I'll just start, I think, by inking this up. Let me get rid of my dome folder to the side. Oops. And instantly it just looks completely different once it's even just inked, even if nothing, nothing else. So there we go. the other side. I mean as I say this has got some coffee sludges on from where I've been obviously coffee dyeing some pieces nearby to it so uh, it's already got some marks on it but luckily they just add to the add to the effect. Flap. 
focus a bit on the fold line because obviously that's where you'd get the you know the biggest what am I trying to say the biggest you know what am I trying to say where it would be marked the most so I just happened to have this that was just kind of poking out on my desk so it's just a stamped piece that might look quite nice on there and actually we could just make that really nice and um, raggedy on the edges Probably a little bit on the small side which is a bit of a shame but let's see if we can just layer it up a little bit with maybe, maybe with some doily or something as well just going to get rid of this corner piece from that doily it's stopped raining can you hear it's well you probably can't hear it's because it's stopped raining um, but my gosh, it has been chucking it down. I think it's like forecast to rain pretty much the whole day now. So no doubt it will be off again soon. Just wondering whether to put that little postage stamp there. That's just from my Bees Knees kit. And again, it was just here to the side, which I just thought, oh, you know, that might look quite nice. I've got this pink ribbon that was just floating about. I'm not quite sure about that. Um, I've got here this. I'm just reaching for things that are laying about, really. Just seeing, you know, what things might look good. Got a bit of lace here, so let's trim this down. Tried to trim that down a little bit more, you know, raggedy, like that. Well, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? And if we want some book page or something there as well. In fact, I have been having a bit of a tidy up, which I'm going to show you guys my progress. Once I've done a bit more, I mean, obviously at the moment there's probably not enough to warrant showing anybody but once I've got a bit more done I'll share with you my um I mean it's nothing exciting it's like one or two changes you know and I have to just quickly say no such change on my desk it's still just just as much of a tip but um yeah I have started well, I've had a little tiny bit of um storage solutions elsewhere so I will be sharing that with you got some little flowers here I wonder if we could have one of those something like that uh, hmm well let's just go for it because I don't want to just um, take up everybody's time so I'm just going to glue this piece of book page down just glue that there I'm going to glue the doily down yes I managed to get these rectangular doilies and um, I've seen them before and I hadn't bought them because I thought well they're you know bigger than the A4 size I'm not sure I'll use them wow I love them wish I'd bought them when I first saw them now they're really nice to use and um, yeah I really really like them don't ask me why I don't know quite what seems different about them but they're just really nice I really really like them so I've just got another piece here I just wonder whether we should put that coming out there maybe
We could maybe have a bit more book page. like that I think so just ink this up like that glue that one down okay and pop that one there just going to just pop the doily down there Yeah, so um, I managed to get these rectangular doilies and then um, obviously I've coffee dyed a bunch of them, not all of them, but quite a few and uh, I'm just loving them, really, really like them. But we could have this, I mean we could, I guess like that actually. Do you think? Might have to have a bit of doily here. I think I like that. Let me get rid of that corner again. I'm not so keen on the the plainish corner. Just glue this piece of doily down like that. I'm going to have this piece here. Whoops. This little postage stamp. And then where did I put that lace? So that's here. So I'm just going to twink up the lace a little bit. Do we want the lace here? Even over there? No, that's a bit strange. What about like that? Do we like that that way round, or is that a bit strange? Maybe it's better like that. Okay, I'm going to have it like that, because otherwise, actually, I wonder if I need it plain. Oh, decisions, decisions, again. Now, that's why I'm finding the 3 and 30 alphabet challenge really helpful, because um, there is definitely no time for debate there. You know, you just have to just crack on and do what you have to do. Sorry, I decided the flowery side after all, in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so for someone like me who actually is, you know, inclined to dither around, it's actually really helpful because there's just no time, no time for dithering at all. Um, so although it is a pressure, it's like a useful, a useful pressure. I mean, this is ridiculous, isn't it? I don't know why I can't just can't just get it quite right. <laughs> Again, I mean, this is where anyone who's not a crafter, if they stumbled across a video, you know, this this video, they'd just think, "What is that woman doing? Life's too short for all this." You know, does that look right? Does that look right? Just wouldn't get it at all, would they? But there we go. I quite like it like that. So I'm going to pop. Oh, look at my my glue. Ugh. Now it's stuck on my finger. Right. Okay. Oh my gosh. Come on, glue. There we go. Just glue that down. 
that. Just try and have it overhanging at the bottom a bit. And then let's glue this piece on. Okay, finally, finally we got there. And then I might just have that little flower just to the side. It looks pretty, doesn't it? Oops. Like that, I'll have to just kind of glue in the two layers because I'm not sure that that's all that well attached. It came off of a little vintage headband thing for a bridesmaid and um, yeah I'm not sure how well I attach that up oh that is now especially now I've pulled it apart but there we go oh it's going really black again now it's obviously about to chuck it down again right finally so that's our envelope that we've made and obviously you know this is quite a large envelope so this would just probably clip onto a page maybe with a paper clip or something and obviously you could then just put your pieces inside. Now obviously I haven't decorated the other side of it um, because I didn't want to keep you here all day. But of course you could actually glue this in on that flap and have it as a little kind of fold out flippy piece. If I just show you on a couple of pages here. So if this were obviously attached on the side of a page, it could just clip over and be like that, oops, like that, and obviously open out. Or you could have it, you know, glued onto the page, opening out, however you like, really. Um, but it turned out quite pretty, didn't it, in the end, so got there eventually. So, yeah, I hope that you've all had a good time. I hope that you've managed to do some mass making of some more conventional style envelopes there. Um, I do apologise, obviously you know for the uh, lazy way that I was doing the envelopes obviously not cutting the notches out um you know and obviously if you followed along and then you decided actually I prefer not being lazy and cutting them out then I do apologize I was just obviously being lazy but yes they are obviously much better once you cut the the little notches out so um yeah but I hope that you managed to get a lot done and I hope you're going to join me next week for next week's um mass making workshop so Thanks very much and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks then. Bye.